Well, I like to walk. You don't see the, you don't see everything unless you walk in. Okay, it's Friday night on Skid Row. Right. Does it matter that it's Friday night or is every night like? Well, over the last year, it seems like every night is a problem. And you've been out here for 17, 17 years. years. 17. Well, now 18. Tents over here stay up all day. You, yeah, you unfortunately just... they stay up even though they're not supposed to. Yeah. They stay up all day. There are some individuals who hide under the guise of homelessness and engage in drug sales in these tents. These are individuals who are able-bodied, could go home anytime they want, and they just come down here and prey on the people. There's a couple of them that are actually homeless. But you know yeah. that's so unless you, you can't arrest them unless you see. Unless I see the crime. And people don't understand that. You know, people always go, well, why don't you arrest the drug dealers? <laughs> I have, <laughs> our fellow officers have over and over. If you smell that smell, that's a very, very dangerous smell called spice. That's yeah. Is she okay? Yeah. Okay. Just waiting for the ambulance. Okay. All right. S Spice is the worst thing that could have hit Skid Row in years. I, I thought it was going to be next. What what if you don't mind, yes, it does can you explain to her what Spice is and what it does, if you don't mind? It's not for people with weak minds. It's not for humans, actually. Really, it's, it's not. It said it's not for humans. But they smoke it, and that's why people walk around here and going crazy and look like tarantulas and stuff because it's not for you. It's synthetic. Okay. And what they do is they're each each different brand has a different kind of chemical in it. You can smoke some spice and be in this catatonic state with one brand, and, and you need meth to pick you back up. Then you can smoke another brand, and you can be standing in front of a city bus breakdancing, waiting for it to run you over, or fighting with four or five people at the same time. Before, when it was just mental illness, we can deal with that really, really, really easy. There are people who we were able to talk off of two-story buildings. Hey, Joe, put your clothes on and come down. And they'd be like, is that you, Joseph? And uh, they'd come down because it's me. It's just these drugs, you know, that it just takes over their mind. It's not like homelessness nationwide. We know nationwide what their attributes to homelessness are. Let's be real. I'm going to say disenfranchisement. Yeah. I'm going to say lack of jobs. I'm going to say a recession. I'm poor education. Mm -hmm. I'm going to even throw in a little racism, okay? I believe there are a lot of people that are behind the curve because of racism. But in this 50 block radius we call Skid Row, the majority of people that are out here in these streets are not here because of those reasons. It's because of addiction. And that's not vilifying them. As you can see, I have a great relationship with them. And they love me because I am honest. I've heard that it's three. you have three days. If you go into Skid Row, you, need, you have to get out within three days or else you're not getting out. That sounds like a good statistic. Because especially if the person coming in is a drug addict, that first day, they're actually going to try to get help. They're going to see the craziness out here and go, I, I cannot stay in these streets. Yeah. The second day, they're going to get stressed out. The third day, they're going to say, you know what? Let me try this crack again real quick. Let me, because I can't take it. I can't take the stress. And now they're stuck here forever. We're, we have a serious raise in crime right now. Let's just talk about my area uh, uh, of Skid Row. Right now in Skid Row, year to date, last year, uh, from last year to now, we have a, about a 71% increase in robberies. That's huge. We have a 73% increase in aggravated assaults. And we have a 91% increase in rapes. And the rapes are happening, a lot of them are happening right in those tents that we see. This is the outer just, courtyard okay. of the Midnight Mission. The people that are in here are in here because they don't want to be out there. Uh, but sadly, uh, <clears throat> because the criminals have become more emboldened with the relaxing the laws, hey, how you doing? They come back and forth as they please. They use the restroom to try to sell drugs. Once again, that is not the mission's fault. The missions are calling us every day to try to help them, but we can arrest one person and they'll be out in six hours. And, and you know, so the message being sent is, nothing's going to happen to me if I come and victimize these people. Hey, beautiful. I, I couldn't find you today, but I'm going to keep looking. Um, I didn't find her. I'll find her. I'm going to check. I'm going to check Crocker again tomorrow. We found, we found her. Oh, good, good. Tell her she is not in any trouble. I just want to talk to her. All right. Hey, sir, pack this up right now. You know there's no hustle. Mine, but I will. Okay, whoever's it is, I need to pack it up. So they can't, they can't sell no. stuff on the street? And the reason why is, if it was just that, I'd be, oh, okay, I'd have some mercy. But I also know that sometimes they hide cocaine and heroin, and they use that as a guise to sell drugs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know you guys can't hustle here. You got to shake the spot. <laughs> okay, hold on. Excuse me, ma'am. You mind if I look at that real quick? Oh, come on, man. Oh, no, 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 no video Now, this, this, is, this is actually legal. Because there's no residue in here, mm -hmm. this is legal. But there's a freaking drug program right here. 
and they sell that these are people able-bodied young people who could be in college getting a student loan instead they stay out here all day long and sell and sell not just crack but the means for people to destroy themselves hey you don't have to run these are legal here we're in a public space here you go hey what's up young lady Hi, young lady. She stay Hi. at the union. Okay. She's not familiar with skin. Okay. Okay. Here, here are the rules, and, and I'm telling you this because I love you. <laughs> okay. Don't borrow money from anybody. Okay. Once you borrow money from somebody out here, you are bought and paid for. Exactly. Get everything you need. Don't look at my face because I'm an excellent. Oh yeah, don't don't show her face, please. Uh, 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 use. You can show my eyes. I'm, I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, brother. God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, the missions have everything you need as far as food and clothes, you know, but, but don't borrow money. If you get one of these guys trying to say they're trying to help you, be careful because oh, a lot no, of times it's a trick. All the damn time. But usually they're trying to trap you so they can get you working on the stroll, you know, because human trafficking is real here. Prostitution is real here. And all they got to do is get you hooked and it's a wrap. You have no idea what's going on inside He's these a tents. giant. Well, I know, I, I know what's happening in the tents yeah. because I would sit up on rooftops for hours and hours and observe. And so I know that guy right there sells weed. I know the guy in the, there was a guy in a tent next to that white tent that sold uh, crack cocaine and methamphetamines. Uh, my friend uh, Iris, sweet lady, I won't give her a, a, a real name, but I remember she was clean and sober for about two years. And uh, she came down here to celebrate her sobriety with me. And I told her, I said, baby, I'm proud of you, but you gotta get the hell out of here. And she says, no, I gotta go downtown and I got to tell these folks my peeps on San Julian. She walked right here. Excuse me, brother. She walked right here and told somebody about her sobriety, and some drug dealer slash addict walked up to her and blew crack cocaine in her in her face, and she never left Skid Row. She overdosed about six times after that in a tent that was right next to the orange tent. I haven't seen her. I'm worried about her. My friend Lena Diggs, a 76-year-old woman, died right there died like a, unfortunately like an animal she's a human being but she died in garbage right here because of this environment we couldn't see her so we couldn't save her I came here to save lives not to stand by and watch people die as you've been walking by like have you been seeing people you've arrested oh absolutely I'm sorry man I apologize oh, right. so sorry oh how you doing sweetheart didn't mean to bump into you yes <laughs> have you seen people you've arrested most of the people that shook my hand and hugged me I arrested <laughs> Really? see here's the thing you can be a police officer without being a jerk. See, the people here know that when I do my job, it's not because I hate them or I'm trying to ruin their lives. It's because I'm trying to help the community in my own way. They know it's not pretty, but they understand my heart. I could have easily been stuck with a shiv or a hypodermic needle all these years. There are people out here who hate me, but these people even have my back when that happens. <laughs> you know, and that's the beautiful thing. That's the beautiful thing. I, I can't see myself working anywhere else. I really can't.